So now that we know how to use the CLI um, and where to store our credentials, um, let's go actually do something pragmatically with the SDK. And so I had recently contributed to the AWS docs uh, for recognition, so I figured we could pull some of that code and have some fun there, okay? So what I want you to do is go to Google and type in AWS docs recognition, and we're going to uh, click through here to Amazon recognition. Uh, we're going to go to the developer developer's guide with HTML. Uh, apparently they have a new look, let's give it a go. Okay, there's always something new here. Um, I'm not sure if I like it, but this is the new look to the docs. And uh, we're gonna need to find that code there. So I think it is under detecting uh, faces here um, and probably under detecting faces in an image, okay? And so the code that I added was actually the Ruby and the Node.js one, okay? So we can choose which one we want. I'm gonna do the Ruby one because I think that's more fun. Uh, and that's the uh, my language of choice, okay? And so I'm just going to go ahead and copy uh, this code here, okay? And we're gonna go back to our Cloud9 environment. I'm gonna create a new um, a new file here, and I'm just gonna call this um, uh, detect faces, ooh, we'll keep underscore there, faces, dot RB, okay? And I'm just gonna double click in here and paste that code in, all right? And what we're going to have to do is we're going to need to supply our uh, credentials here. Uh, generally, you do want to pass them as, in as environment variables. That's a very safe way to provide them. Uh, so we can give that a go. Um, but in order to uh, get this working, we're going to have to create a gem file in here. So I'm just going to create a new file here because we need some dependencies here. Uh, and we're just going to type in gem file. Okay. And uh, within this gem file, we're going to have to uh, provide uh, the uh, gem a recognition okay so i'm just gonna go over here and supply that there uh there is a few other lines here that we need to supply so i'm just gonna go off screen and go grab them for you okay so i just uh, uh went off screen here and grabbed that extra code here uh, this is pretty uh, boilerplate stuff that you have to include in a gem file okay and so what this is going to do it's going to install uh, the aws sdk for ruby but specifically just for recognition so i do also have open up here the uh, aws sdk for Ruby and, and for Node.js, Python, etc., they all um, have one here. Um, and so it tells you how you can install gems. So if we're dealing with recognition here, I'm just gonna do a quick search here for recognition. Okay, sometimes it's just better to uh, navigate on the left-hand side here. All right, and so I'm just looking for a recognition. Okay, and so if we wanna learn how to use this thing, usually a lot of times with this, it's gonna tell you what gem you're gonna need to install. So this is the one we are installing. And then we click through uh, here through client, and then we can get an idea of all the kind of operations we can perform, okay? So when I needed to figure out how to write this, I actually went to the CLI here and I just kind of read through it and pieced it together and looked at the output to figure that out. Okay, so nothing uh, too complicated there. But anyway, we have all the stuff we need here. So um, we need to uh, make sure we're in our uh, environment directory here, which is that Spock dev directory. So we're gonna type uh, tilde, which goes to our home directory, environment, okay? We're gonna do an ls hyphen la and just make sure that we can see that file there in the gem file, okay? And then we can go ahead and do a bundle install, all right? And so what that's gonna do is it's going to now install that dependency. So here we can see that installed the AWS SD, uh, SDK core and also recognition, okay? And so uh, now we have all our dependencies to uh, run the script here. So the only thing that we need to do here is we need to provide it um, an input so um, here we um, can provide it a specific bucket and a file. There is a way to provide it locally. Um, we did download this file, but I figured what we'll do is we'll actually provide um, um, the bucket here. So we will say, what's the bucket called? Exam Pro uh, 000. Um, and the next thing we need to do is define the key. So it's probably the key here. So I'm gonna do Enterprise uh, D. Okay, and then we're just gonna supply uh, data there. All right, and um, we can pass these um, credentials uh, via the environment variables. We could just hard code them and paste them in here, but that's a bit sloppy. So we are gonna go through the full motions of providing them um, through the environment here. And all we have to do to do that is we're just going to um, paste in uh, like so, okay? And we're just going to copy that. So that's the first one. And then we're going to do the password here, oops, okay. And hopefully this is going to work the first time. And then we'll have to do bundle exec uh, detect faces. Okay, and then this is how these are going to get passed into there. And assuming that uh, my uh, key and bucket are correct, 
uh, then hopefully we will get some output back, okay? All right, it's just saying it could not uh, detect faces here. Um, I just have to hit up here. I think I just need to put the word Ruby in front of here. Okay, so my bad. All right, and um, we, is it working? Uh, so we don't have the uh, correct permissions here. So we are a power user, so maybe we just don't have enough permissions. So I'm just gonna go off screen here and see what permissions we need to um, be able to do this. So just playing around a little bit here and also reading the uh, documentation uh, for the Ruby SDK, I figured out what the problem was. And it's just that we don't need this uh, forward slash here. Um, so uh, we just take that out there, okay? And uh, just run what we ran uh, last there, okay? And then we're gonna get some output back. Uh, and then it just shows us that it detected a face. So we have the coordinates of a face. Um, and uh, if we used um, some additional uh, uh, tool there, we could actually draw over top of the image a bounding box to show uh, where the face is detected. But there's some interesting information. So it detected that uh, the person in the image was male um, and that they were happy. Okay, so, uh, you know, if you think that that is happy, then that's what recognition thinks. Okay. Um, and it also um, detected the face between ages 32 and 48. Um, to be fair, uh, Data is an Android, so he has a very unusual skin color. Um, so, you know, it's very hard to do uh, to determine that age. But I would say that um, this is the acceptable um, age range of the actor at the time of. So it totally makes sense. Okay. Um, so yeah, and uh, there you go. So that is the pragmatic way of doing it. Now, you don't ever really want to uh, ever store your credentials with uh, on your server, okay? Because you can always use IAM rules uh, and attach them to EC2 instances, and then that will safely uh, provide credentials onto your EC2 instances to uh, have those privileges. But it's important to know how to use the SDK. Um, and whenever you're in development, working on your local machine, or maybe you're in Cloud9 environment, you are going to have to supply uh, those um, credentials, okay? Um, so there you go. So now that we are done with our, um, AWS, our AWS CLI and SDK uh, follow along here, let's just